Good morning, Lawn Care Nation. Richie Plemons putting his lawn in landscape. It is cold this morning. I'm sure most of the uh, entire eastern seaboard knows what I'm talking about from the Midwest all the way uh, out to the ocean there. You know, it is just cold. Um, I don't even know what the temperature is here today. <laughs> it, it, too dang cold, that's what it is. That That's the temperature here today. Uh, currently it is 12 degrees. So I'm guessing the feel like temperature is probably about five. Uh, I know that's not as cold as some of you guys in the Midwest and up around Illinois and Minnesota, and Michigan. All you guys are, you know, negative 60. That's unbearable. Ooh, not for this Georgia boy. Mm -mm. I like just normal, you know, comfortable short sleeve weather that's what i want that's what i prefer and uh hopefully we get it back here in the next uh, few days uh it's kind of crazy you know we had snow we still got a little bit left over here on the ground if you can see it see, look at that. Let's see. That's proof it does snow from time to time in georgia so uh i think we had uh one maybe two inches of snow if, if you want to call it a snow uh uh, usually we'll get two or three a year. Uh, usually one that we consider a big one's about uh, uh, four or five inches. Uh, we usually get one of those a year, then two or three of these little dustings, I guess you'd call it. So, but it does snow here where I'm at in Georgia, so we do get that from time to time. Um, today's agenda: uh, we're doing our knockout roses and drift roses. Uh, you know, a drift rose is a ground cover rose. Uh, so that is what we're doing today. We're starting on our crepe myrtles and we're starting on our roses. Uh, it is the end of January going into the beginning of February. So it's that time of year that we start doing that, start cutting our grasses back, uh, our miscanthus grasses, uh, pampas grasses, things like that. So that's what we do this time of year, uh, starting in fe the beginning of February, running all the way up to the end of February. And then in March, we start finishing Finishing up all the just a little fine tuning things just before we start mowing again and uh, generally we'll start mowing here about uh, usually early March to mid March is when we really start getting into the grind of our weekly mows so um, we do get to mow a lot sooner than a lot of you guys up north do uh, of course but you know so we've got to do these things a lot sooner than than a lot of people so but anyway, I'm going to teach you guys how we prune our knockout roses and our drift roses back. There's two different types of pruning that you can do. Uh, this time of year, we generally tend to do a rejuvenation pruning, which we basically take the rose down to about six to eight inches. Uh, on our drift roses and then on our knockout roses we generally try to take those about 8 to 12 inches uh, depending on how big they are some of them we may only take down to about 18 inches so um, you have uh, like I said rejuvenation pruning and then you have a, a, a heading back. Uh, heading back generally is good throughout the summer to keep them things from getting so big. Uh, some of you guys that have drift roses probably know that these things pretty much triple in size throughout the growing season. They grow extremely fast, get extremely large and can get overgrown and out of control in a hurry if you're not keeping an eye on them. So uh, uh, we're going to do a rejuvenation pruning on all of our roses today. That way come spring, you know, March, when they start flushing out, then uh, you'll get a real good uh, real good bloom and, and full rose. So I'm uh, going to show you how we do that. Uh, I've got three crepe myrtles today that we're going to cut back. All right, one crepe myrtle, a lot of guys, you know, we talk about crepe myrtle, how it's a bad thing. Uh, these trees are going to be up against a house. And I'm going to show you how I prune a crepe myrtle that's up against a house to keep it from getting up into the siding and things like that. Um, we, if, if the tree's out in the open, I do not like to prune like this, but uh, when they're up against some sort of building, or a, a low hanging power line this is the only time that I'll actually prune this much back off a tree and I'll show you how I do it it's not necessarily taking it to the knuckle I'll still leave some stem sticking up there and you know give it a good look so it doesn't look quite so bad so before anybody starts with a crepe murder then you know why I'm doing this and the reason for it so uh, the customer doesn't want to remove them they want to leave them there they like them and so that's the way we're gonna cut them a lot of people you know they get upset with a crepe murder yet yeah, it's not it's not the best as for the tree, 90% of the time you're not going to kill it though. It's a pretty resilient, you know, beast of a tree. So it's not like you're cutting down your mama's Japanese maple or something, you know. So anyway, let's get with it. And uh, got a special guest with me today. The boss is coming to work today. So she's, uh, they're not working today. So she decided she's going to come work with me and show me how things were done, apparently. Uh, that or she just. I think she wants me to take her shopping sometime during the day, so I think I've got to stop at a couple stores while in between jobs, you know. But anyway, let's get with it. 
All right, so now you can see this crepe myrtle here. It's small. They want to leave it in a bushy form because it's right here in this front bed and they don't want to get it too big. So this is one of those times where, you know, you talk about crepe myrtle, we're going to cut it pretty low just simply because it's in a bed and we don't want it encroaching on this Japanese maple. And then we've got these knockout roses here. I'm going to show you how to rejuvenate prune those. We're going to cut them back. Uh, we're not going to head them back. Head them back is where you go into your first buds and you just kind of clip them. Those are good during the summer to kind of keep them uh, in a manageable shape. So uh, with those, we're actually going to take those and cut those way back to about 12 inches off the ground. And you, I mean, you ain't got to be super precise as long as you you know make a good shape. Uh, you know they're going to flush back out and they're going to you know fill out and make you some pretty blooms throughout the uh, summertime. So let's get started with it. Ever torn so deep, falling down through the clouds. I feeling you. As you can see there, we didn't really completely murder it out, but we did cut it back pretty good uh, just to kind of keep it manageable throughout the year because she don't want it encroaching on her roses or her Japanese maple. So it's uh, about the best you can do. It had been cut back to the knuckles every year for years and years. And the only true way to get rid of that knuckle is to go below the knuckle and cut everything flat and then not cut it for you know three or four years at all. That's the only way to get rid of the knuckle but uh, she don't want to do that she just wants it you know left manageable every year so that's what we do for her here and we just kind of cut it back enough to where that uh, it can be uh, manageable throughout the summer so let's get to these knockouts now like i said with the knockout you don't have to worry too much when you're doing a rejuvenation pruning you want them just to flush out you just want to go in there and we're going to cut way back down in here get them down low to where that uh, you know it can grow back out now if you were just doing a heading back you would come in here just above the bud uh, just right above that bud and you could clip it back so but we're gonna do a rejuvenation and we're gonna cut them way back so you know we can just kind of cut and then uh, clean it up afterwards and see what it looks like see with the rejuvenation printing you don't have to be so scared I mean you can get in here and you can cut them back pretty deep uh, we're not done with this one yet but as you can tell we're getting in we're cutting it pretty deep 
Uh, make sure you get all your cuts about a 45 degree angle. That way water kind of runs off of it. You don't want it perfectly flat, freeze on top of it. But anyway, uh, if you're just budding or heading them back, you'll see here, you get these little buds. And like, here's a little bud right here. I don't know how well you can see it there, but we'll set our camera focus. See the little bud there? You would basically just cut just above that bud. You know, if you're heading them back, but we're we're doing a rejuvenation, so we're going to take them down pretty low, and then we're going to come in here on the inside and start cleaning all this dead out. You got some dead in here. You want to come in, and clean all that out. Make sure, you're like, we'll cut this one off. It's got a lot of dead in it. Take this one off. It's got some dead in it. You know, and just open it up in the center so you can get some air and get some sunlight down into the middle of the plant. So, anyway, we're going to get back to cutting them. And get you a little video. Now that we've got the roses and that one little crepe myrtle done, we need to get we need to get the miscanthus grasses. So, and that is this stuff right here. I'm sure a lot of you probably dealt with it before, but a lot of you wrap it up. I don't wrap it up. I just take it and cut it down and rake it up. So let's get with it. This tree here you can see it's up close to the house so what we want to do is we want to come in here we're going to take anything coming back to the inside out right in here this needs to come out it's going inside but you can see over the years where it was actually cut at the knuckles you know and that's what you get here is these knuckles now, like i said to get rid of that you need to cut the tree flat flush across the uh the uh, below the knuckle just flush and then don't cut it for three or four years but this one's up against the house so we like to keep it kind of low so we're gonna get everything out of the inside, clean that up, and then we're gonna cut it back a little bit and you can kind of get an idea how we do it.
So now you can see how we prune them up against the house. We don't cut them back to the knuckles. We just kind of thin them out, shorten the limbs on it. And get everything together so, you know, nice, neat looking, even without the limbs on it. It don't look so disgusting like they do when you hack them down to nothing. So, but anyway, it's going to wrap up this video. We're going to get this cleaned up. We're going to get out of here. Call today. We've got uh, two more places to get to, but I'm not going to do any video in there. So, just want to show you guys how we do our knockout roses, our miscanthus grasses, and our crepe myrtles, especially when they're up against the house or something. So, uh, most of the time when they're out in the open, crepe myrtles, just let them go and just keep them thinned out. Make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.